Good morning, guys. <sighs> Do you see the smile that's on my face? This because I have got quite the adventure for us to go home. Um, you'll enjoy this one. Today I'm going to accomplish two first. I'm going to fly in a Pilatus PC-12, which is a plane I've always wanted to get into. And secondly, I'm going to take my first trip down to the Bahamas. Now, if you have been following this channel for any length of time, in some of my videos you've noticed that I've mentioned my flight instructor, Cowboy. Well, his real name is Lee Tidwell. And outside of flight instruction, he actually flies commercially for a company um, out of Savannah. And uh, Lee is a true aviator. He has a passion for teaching uh, that's real infectious, which is why I enjoy him being my instructor so much. And today, he needs to fly down to Nassau in the Bahamas and pick up two clients. And I'm gonna fly a right seat and go with him. Hey, I know this, uh, you know, on this camera, the coffee looks kind of white. It's not quite as white as it looks. I mean, there's a little bit of manliness in this cup of coffee. Let me know, do you like black coffee or a little bit of cream in it like me? My first cup of coffee's gotta be sweet. After that, we can darken it up some. But drop me a comment down below. Let me know if you prefer, you know, black coffee or, or cream. Anyway, I'm gonna finish this cup of joe and we're gonna head to Savannah to the airport. Start up. Let's fire up. Waiting for 13 percent. Oil pressure's coming up. We're good. Introduce fuel. We should have a light off. There's our light off. It's a two stage light off. So we'll do the first stage. ITT's coming up. Oil pressure's coming up. Temp's coming up. Everything's good. Stand up by to shut down. There's this first stage, level off, that's seven nozzles. Now our next seven nozzles is going to line off right about now. And she is raising up. The igniter is off over 50% and the starter comes off. We are good to go. Good morning, clear to the Mike Yankee November November Airport as files. Up and maintain 3000, expect flight level 21010, one zero minutes after departure. Departure frequency 120.4, squawk 1614. There was a cold front blowing through that was making it so windy, and in my small plane, this would have been a no-go flight. Watch the video footage here and see if you can tell just how bumpy it was on our climb out. Yeah, you heard that right, a bald eagle. I took that as a sign of good fortune for our choppy flying out. Appreciate the fire up. Uh, thanks for missing freedom and contact the porch. Take care. Roger that. No departure. Y'all have a wonderful day. And departure is Pop Echo. We're climbing through 1,700 for 3,000. Pop Echo, sir. Departure radar. Contact turn left. Clear direct. Get both. Let me maintain 100,000. Hold up to 100,000. The flight might have started out choppy, but once we climbed out above the clouds, it was smooth as silk. Mm -hmm. 
Now, I have seen the coast of Georgia from the air numerous times, but seeing it from 10,000 feet, that was impressive. Man, this thing is a Cadillac. Yeah, man, it, it rides real smooth. All right, so our inertial separator is a device that causes, keeps us from picking up trash off the runway and ice and stuff like that. Pump it three miles northwest. Now that we're off the runway and we're not going to be in any more ice or any more uh, scenarios where we could pick up anything to throw an engine, we're going to turn our inertial separator and our actual power is going to increase. Uh, it will some power because we're not getting all the air into the engine, so. Gotcha. Now it's going to it's gonna pump some more power to it. Pressurization is climbing, so uh, right now we're climbing at 375 feet per minute. Inside the cabin, even though we're going at 1900 outside. Uh, gotcha. Our cabin altitude is 1800 versus our 8900, and our differential pressure, so the difference between outside pressure and inside pressure is 3.2 right now in climbing. I noticed on our avionics that we were headed straight towards the Kennedy Space Center, which is something I was extremely excited about. The only problem was it was going to put us directly over the top of it, which makes it hard to see. But almost if it was planned by ATC. You want to go to uh, Freeport now, or you want to go all the way to Charger? Ooh, we'll take Freeport right now if you'll give it to us, Bob Becker. I'll back over there, direct to Freeport, and uh, join the Bomber 63 Victor. All right, uh, direct to Freeport, Bomber Route uh, 63 Victor. Thank you so much, Bob, Bob Becker. ATC gave us our left turn to go direct to Nassau a little early and it put the Space Center right out of my window. Here is the runway where spacecraft land after returning from space missions. And to put it in perspective from our view at 20,000 feet, here is a large airport with runways of 7,000 feet. And this runway at Kennedy Space Center, 15,000 feet. On this trip, we got to enjoy miles of Florida beaches, and we also spotted Daytona Speedway from the air. We had a nice peaceful flight over the open water, and it gave us a chance just to relax and catch up since it had been a little while since we hung out. This is, to me, this is like the parts of aviation that's just phenomenal. Is this part of nature, this is just mother nature right here. This is the way God created it, but it's a, it's a side of it that we would never get to experience or never see if we were not pilots. That's right, that's right. And I tell people all the time, I have the best office view on the planet, you know? Um, and no, at no point when you take off are you gonna see the same right. setup. You know, the clouds will always be a little different. There's always something gorgeous about how they how react to the atmospheres and the wind, uh, temperatures outside. So from our location, we are 10 minutes or less from entering the Bermuda Triangle. Oh God, <laughs> this is where we may disappear, huh? <laughs> uh. Before you know it, we were flying over beautiful blue waters. As I listened to Lee tell me the stories about the different airports he's flown in and out of in the Bahamas through his career, and if you know me, it sparked an idea and an interest to fly my Cherokee 180 down to the Bahamas. Because of the New Year holiday, the arrival in the Nassau was extremely busy and we had to follow a JetBlue airplane in. Papa Echo, Glad Land on a 1-4, wind 220 degrees at 1-0 knot. Now once we got landed and parked, we were only there for about 30 minutes to pick up our passengers and then we were turning and burning on our way back to Savannah, Georgia. 
Now I've flown over beautiful beaches just like Destin, Florida, but there was something about the water here in the Bahamas that was just jaw-dropping. And before you know it, we were arriving back in Savannah and bringing this journey to an end. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. Consider subscribing if you want to see our future adventures. And we will see you on the next one.